Multi-rotors are awesome and they have so much potential. They are possible because the smartphone industry has made all these sensors like accelerometers and gyroscopes so cheap and accessible, allowing us to artificially stabilize something that has no natural stability on its own. Ever since I got addicted to scratch building my own RC aircraft, my main focus has been to try as many different configurations and ideas as possible with the least amount of time, effort, and money required. I'm a poor college student and so it's hard to justify buying four identical motors and ESCs all at once, while airplanes only need one. And I've always just kind of thought that quads look too easy, like they're just all the expensive stuff held out on sticks. My experience with multi-rotors so far has just been a bunch of small toy products, and I also fixed my brother's broken quadcopter by using foam board and made it into a little micro FPV quad. I still have my APM 2.6 autopilot around that I sometimes use on airplanes, and since it can control multi-rotors too, I finally decided to buy the cheapest set of identical motors and speed controllers that I could find. And if some turn out to be faulty, I figure I can just make a tricopter instead. To test my theory that quads are just as easy as some motors held out on sticks, I went out and found two sticks. I cut them a little shorter, and then I screwed them together and drilled a bunch of holes in them to save weight. I made this little power distribution board with a breadboard and a bunch of solder. I figured that the easiest way was to alternate positive and negative on each of the corners, and then connect the like polarities. The most annoying part is just making sure that all the motors spin the right way, and deductively figuring out which APM outputs control which speed controller. And of course, after a bunch of Arducopter specific setup, I took it out to see if it really works. I was really impressed with how responsive and stable it was with 100% default settings. Soon after, however, I did something really dumb, uh, which resulted in the bending of all my motor shafts. I ordered a whole bunch more stainless steel rod to replace the motor shafts, but I was too impatient for it to get here, and instead I just went to the Home Depot and got some plain steel rod to play with for now. It's only like two bucks, so it's worth playing with until the fancy stainless steel stuff shows up. While I was there, I picked up some of my favorite stuff, which is Home Depot aluminum bar. I used it to make landing gear for this plane, and this plane, and the chainsaw plane, and the chainsaw plane's wing struts, the suspension project, and even this thing and this thing. They also have square and round tubes, which I haven't tried yet. I made this simple frame by bending the aluminum and drilling holes in it. And then I simply screwed the arms onto some fancy plywood with some wood screws, and then I just cut the tips off. It would have been better to drill and tap the aluminum, but I'm out of machine screws and this method hasn't failed me yet. I removed the little grub screw and I pressed out the bent motor shafts and then I pressed in some of my plain steel shaft. Because I didn't want to try to make a groove to hold these little retainer clips, I decided to use the motors in this configuration instead so that I don't need them. And so here is my second attempt at a scratch built quad frame. I think this configuration is more protective of the motors and it also looks kind of cool. It's not as strong as like square tube or carbon, but I'll see how it works and it's easy to bend back. I used prop savers instead of prop adapters to further protect my mild steel shaft, and also because I ruined all of my other prop adapters. Here's the maiden flight of the new quad, still with default tuning. And now I broke out my telemetry radios for some real-time data. Mode change to stabilize for system one. System one is armed.
Voltage warning. 10.5 volts. Mode change to stabilize for system 1. As it turns out, I didn't quite tighten the prop saver on tight enough. I broke two of my props, but the frame is fine. This is the first arm that I made, and the whole orientation makes the arm much less strong. This whole placement pattern is better. So this has been my experience trying to make the cheapest quad that I could. The APM 2.6 is old technology now, but it's definitely not cheap. It's just what I already had. There are plenty of cheaper flight controllers these days to choose from. Thanks for watching! I drew up this winglet in Rhino to fit on the wingtip of the 3D printed flying wing pod plane. I had to stop this print halfway through, but it's pretty cool to look at the internal structure and to verify that it does indeed fit the wingtip. Stay tuned because I'm working on designing an entire airplane to be 3D printed.